What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Today, we're gonna be talking about this video. Can we prove that Jesus existed without the use of the Bible? We can prove that he existed. I'm gonna show you how. The first person I'm gonna mention is a man named Tacitus. So yes, we're gonna be talking about Brittany Valadez and her defense of the Tacitus uh, reference to a Christ or Christus or Christus, however you wanna say it. We're gonna be looking at that. Now I have covered this particular source in depth before in a debate with Inspiring Philosophy, which he thinks he won. This is gonna have a pretty comprehensive look at that particular passage. So if you wanna know more about that, then please stay tuned. This right here is gonna be the thumbnail picture, I'm just telling you guys, because she's literally got an H3H3 H3 kind of going on here. So let's do this. It's Brittany Valadez, and I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy Christmas there, Brittany! How are you doing? All right, Christmas is upon us, which means we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But can we prove that Jesus existed without the use of the Bible? We no! Let me answer that right now. Fuck no! We cannot! As you guys may know, I'm a mythicist. Uh, I don't believe that Jesus actually existed in history, so I will be taking the antithesis of her entire video here and that's that Jesus just simply didn't exist. I think he was a literary concoction. Uh, there are multiple reasons why I think this. Uh, if I were to lay it out in a video, it'd be pretty long. So I'm trying to segment it up into, uh, you know, various topics so that people will uh, consume them a lot uh, more easily. We can prove that he existed. I'm going to show you how. The first person I'm gonna mention is a man named Tacitus. Tacitus served under the emperor Nero. Tacitus? <laughs> like, I don't know, it, it sounds like it's a tic-tac, but it's a Tacitus. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I don't really need to make fun of anybody about like pronouncing names. Uh, generally, I shorten them up with calling them like Billy Boy or something like that or like Larry. <laughs> but th this guy, I mean, ta I, like, I don't know, it's Tacitus. It's, it's Tacitus. If you've done any kind of research or watch any kind of material on this, you would know that it's pronounced Tacitus. But I digress. I fuck up words too. Now, in his book, Annals, Tacitus wrote of a fire that was believed to be started by Nero. To get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate, and a most mischievous superstition thus checked for the moment, again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become popular. Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty. Then, upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted, not so much of the crime of firing the city, as of hatred against mankind. Okay, so she's provided this little bit of evidence and I want to kind of give some background information on this particular source because this particular source is highly contested. For one thing, Tacitus was a historian around between 55 CE and 117 CE, that's, that's when he lived. He's credited with mentioning Jesus in this particular passage, well, technically, Christ, and we'll get into the nuance of that later, but he wrote this in 109 of the Common Era, and not really like soon after the actual burning of Rome happened, but what's not mentioned here is the fact that Christus is, uh, in the actual text of it, it's actually C-R- C-H-R-S-T-U-S. So it's missing that that I there. He actually called them not Christians, but Christians. So it seems to me like the guy that they were named after was Crestus, not Christus. Crestus is actually a slave name that was common at the time, just like Jesus was a common name, uh, being that it was Joseph or, or Yeshua. It, it seems to me like it would it would be more probable that it would be Christus rather than Christus, considering that Christ is a title and not 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 like an actual name. It, it, that's if you take the the passage at face value. Even so, 
he would be getting his information from other Christians at the time. You can't say that he really has independent sources. Uh, he would just be repeating what Christians already knew about or what Christians were saying. But another thing to point out here is the fact that there were other Christians that wrote after Tacitus that don't mention Nero persecuting the Christians for the burning of Rome. For one thing, you got the apocryphal acts of Paul. They were written in about 160 CE. That particular work doesn't mention the Christians being persecuted by Nero for the burning of Rome at all. The apocryphal acts of Paul actually had Nero burning Christians around the death of Paul, but didn't say anything about Nero actually burning Christians, persecuting Christians for the burning of Rome. And then what we have is the Acts of Peter. They were written uh, about the, the late second century, and they actually have Nero being scared by a dream to not persecute the Christians. What we have is, is that we have this one author that says that Nero was persecuting the Christians, and nobody else is talking about this until about 400 CE when Sulpicius Severus, which kind of sounds like a goddamn Harry Potter villain, uh, he was writing about it in uh, 400 CE, and that's the first instance that we see it actually being mentioned. Uh, so, I mean, you have to take that into consideration. But going back to something that I said, that there were no other Christians that were talking about it. There were actually historians in Rome at the time that recorded the burning of Rome and do not mention Nero persecuting the Christians. You know, there's a lot of reasons uh, in which to uh, doubt this particular passage as being, you know, authentic. The fact that there was nobody else that was recording that Nero was persecuting the Christian is kind of suspicious, along with the fact that nobody else used this particular passage at all. Like there were no church fathers that used it. There were no other historians in history that mentioned it until this fucking Harry Potter villain in 400 CE. Now if you go back to what he wrote, you'll see that he mentioned the word Christus. Christus, Christ, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate. In the Gospels, doesn't it mention Pontius Pilate? Hmm, what happened with that? Um, well, well Miss Lady, Pontius was a dick and he penned me up to some wood. So yeah, fuck that guy. They do mention Pontius Pilate, but I mean, again, that was part of the common Christian story at the time. I mean, that, that's part of the narrative that would have been known to Christians. So it's no surprise that they would recite things that Christian already, Christians already thought. Also, the Pontius Pilate in the Bible is completely different from how Pontius Pilate acted in general. Outside of the Bible, like it, the real Pontius Pilate, he would kill somebody for nothing. He had a bunch of people that were in a crowd of protesters uh, dressed up like the protesters, and he had them kill everybody that they could get their hands on in a matter of seconds. So killing one Jew for whatever the fuck reason you can think of is no big deal to this badass motherfucker, especially considering that he got dethroned or, or taken out of power because he was persecuting this other group where he had his men just slaughter the fucking lot of them. You know, you have to presuppose that, you know, Pontius Pilate radically changed his personality so that the Bible could record some accurate history. And that just doesn't seem like it would, it would be very probable. Did we choose Barabbas or Jesus Christ? Did we choose Barabbas or Jesus Christ? You fucking chose me, god damn it. So the, that particular thing is actually a mirror of the Yom Kippur uh, ritual. See, the first century Christians or Jewish Christians had a lot of problems with the Jewish faith, and so they wanted to fix them. And so, boom, they figured they'd kill two birds with one stone, basically, and get rid of the Passover tradition as well as the Yom Kippur. And they did that with Jesus. Tacitus himself wasn't a fan of Christians. When he referenced the pain inflicted by Nero, he called what they did their abominations. Now, he didn't say alleged or reported abominations. He wasn't a fan of Christians. Now, he also mentioned a mischievous superstition which broke out in Rome. Now, this mischievous superstition that he was talking about was Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Now, Tacitus... Like, I get that, that you are reading that from it, but that's not actually what the source says. So I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of superstitious kind of belief contained within 
Christianity, not just re Jesus rising from the dead. Also wrote that Rome was the place where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world become popular. Proof that he did not think Christianity was the cool thing to do. Now with that, there have been some who say, hmm, like for example, Robert Latester, who wrote in the Washington Post. Little can be gleaned from the few non-biblical and non-Christian sources, with only Roman scholar Josephus and Tacitus having any reasonable claim to be writing about Jesus within 100 years of his life. And even those sparse accounts are shrouded in controversy, with disagreements over what parts have obviously been changed by Christian scribes. The manuscripts were preserved by Christians. The fact that both these authors were born after Jesus died, they would thus have probably received this information from Christians, and the oddity that centuries go by before Christian apologists start referencing them. Hmm. Does he have a point? Let's break it down. I don't, I don't, I don't fucking think that you have to break it down, but uh, I mean, go ahead, try to break down Raphael Lattister. Um, he, he's a pretty great uh, agnostic on the historicity of Jesus. He doesn't go the full nine and say that Jesus didn't exist. Uh, he just goes uh, as far as to say, we don't know if he existed or not. First thing, Lattister said, you know what? We can't believe Tacitus. He was born after Jesus died and he probably would have received the information from Christians. Sounds logical, right? I agree. It does sound logical. I think that it, you have, like, time is a major component in, when judging historical sources. So, I mean, if you have, like, an external source that records something like this, after the major, like, uh, after the claims about it have come out being, you know, like the Gospel of Mark, the other Gospels, and Paul, if, if you have them, like, talking a certain way about it after all of that is known in the community, then you can't say that they are recording actual history, given that they're so far removed from the actual time period in which it was said to happen. So, yeah. Lattister's right. I don't know why you have a problem with this. I think that Tacitus would have to reference some kind of earlier document prior to the Gospel of Mark or Paul, because those were the first references to Jesus in history. Mm. Hold on. Tacitus was a well-researched historian. Remember, he wasn't a fan of Christians. So if he's going to do his research, why would he go get it validated by Christians? Let's say they told him, hey, there's this guy named Jesus Christ. Don't you think with him, first of all, hating Christians, second of all, being a well-researched man, meaning he did his research, he would go and ask other people who weren't Christians if this man named Jesus actually existed? Uh, there's no reason to think that Tacitus actually went out and searched for a historical Jesus. Tacitus uh, didn't necessarily need to establish Jesus' historicity at the time. That's That's even considering that the particular passage is is real or even talking about uh you know the christ or whatnot associate professor lawrence mikaituik just call him mike okay goddamn purdue university <laughs> said this earlier in his career when tacitus was proconsul of asia he likely supervised trials questioned people accused of being Christians and judged and punished those who he found guilty, as his friend Pliny the Younger had done when he too was a provincial governor. Thus, Tacitus stood a very good chance of becoming aware of information that he characteristically would have wanted to verify before accepting it as true. So if he had a friend in Pliny the Younger and Pliny was like, yeah, these Christians, they believe this weird shit. What he actually mentioned in his little paragraph there doesn't actually say, oh, Christ did exist or something. All it mentions is that from your own particular version of it, Christus, from which these people got their name. I don't really see that being Jesus specific because Christ is a title. But also if he was talking to Pliny, about it, he would have already known what the Christians believed. He wouldn't necessarily have to like validate it in order to make that statement, if that statement's even his uh, at all. Now remember, Tacitus didn't deny the existence of Jesus. He just didn't believe in the Christian faith. Another historian who spoke- well, Again, here's another point. He just didn't believe in the Christian faith. That's fine. But I would also like to know why he would have called him Christus and you think that that's the most logical name to give Jesus of Nazareth. Rather than Tacitus using his actual name, Tacitus used the title that the Christians gave him? 
or that he gave himself? Like, why wouldn't he, being a non-Christian, just reference him as Jesus and say that, oh, these Christians, they got their name from Jesus because he was considered the Christ. At, like, I don't know. There's just a lot in that passage that doesn't make sense. And you're doing your whole cognitive dissonance thing in order to get around it and shit on Raphael Latt Lattister. Book of Jesus Christ was Josephus Flavius. Oh, good God. I know, GE. I fucking hate this motherfucker too. Fucking Josephus. Thank you, heathens, for making it to the end. Have you left a comment yet with your thoughts on this whole Tacitus passage? No? Well, right now, go down below and leave me a comment. I would love to hear what you think. While you're down there, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of mythicist content. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice, and I will see you heathens later.